rather be with you I'd much rather be with you Welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and I'm coming to you from the southern part of Fyn in Denmark where I live with my partner and my two beautiful children. Uh, we live in a little house in the forest and um, yeah, this is a knitting podcast. <laughs> and I, uh, if I seem a little out of it, it's because I, I have recorded this introduction about 50 times. It's it's been a while since I last recorded, so I just feel a little too self-conscious and uh, uh, like I can't remember how to do this. But um, everything is great. Uh, I've not been recording for a couple of reasons. The little guy has just turned six months and that means I'm a busy mom running around chasing him because he's going everywhere now. He's not crawling yet, but he is army, army crawling all over the floor. Um, he started eating solids, so I'm also doing a lot of that, uh, making food, um, cleaning clothes, dishes, all that good stuff. And the big, my big girl, she's almost four now, so there's also a lot of stuff going on with her. So in general, it's just a really busy time, a really fun time, but really busy. And I've just been focusing on that. I'm on maternity leave, so that's what I do at the moment. Um, but I really missed podcasting. podcasting. Uh, and like I talked about last time, it is a time for me to just focus on something that I really love doing, which is knitting and designing. And I love talking to you guys. I don't have a lot of friends around where I live who knit. Uh, no, I don't know anyone around here that knits. So it's really nice to be able to talk to some knitty friends. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the intro. Let's not do any more intro because I it uh, uh, it's really difficult to get started again. Um, the other reason why I haven't been uploading is because uh, we had some internet issues. Uh, pre it was just I if I would upload heavy videos to YouTube I would use up all the data and then we were sometimes out of data at the end of the month which was not fun because we don't have a TV so we only have internet here and um, but luckily we got uh, a new internet provider or they came and they put the I don't know how it's called in English Anyways, we have a much faster speed now and much more, I can upload much more. So that is really great, which means I can upload vid upload videos more regularly. Um, I don't think it will happen straight away because it's really hard for me to find the time at the moment. Uh, right now I could be doing a million other things like cleaning the house and doing laundry. And uh, so, um, yeah, it's not going to happen super often, I think, uh, right now, but once I'm no longer on maternity leave, I will try to upload uh, again more frequently. So that's gonna be nice and I can do it from home. I don't have to go to the library to do it. Before I start today's episode, there's actually one thing I really want to talk about. Uh, normally I try to avoid having all the info in the beginning. Um, I know some podcasts have a lot of administrative info and just what has I mean? It's nice to to what to talk about what has happened last because we're all people and it's like talking to a friend and how have you been and what's going on. But if there's too much administrative t stuff in the beginning, I sometimes end up turning off the podcast. So I try to avoid that. But there's something I really want to talk about before I start this week's episode. I have been touching on it a little bit he here, very <laughs> little bit, and also on on Instagram. Um, but I haven't, I didn't really know how to talk about it properly and I didn't really think I was the right person to talk about it. But something has made me change my mind and I really want to um, make it very clear that this podcast and the, the little community we have built around my podcast and me as a designer and on my Instagram, it's a space that's for everyone. It's inclusive of every person, no matter 
I mean, what color your skin is or wh who you love and how you look like. I, I don't, I think each and every person is beautiful and should always feel welcome in my space. Um, but, and of course, there has been a lot of talk about diverse, diversity in, in the knitting community lately and a lot of drama and things going on. And I'm not going to go into each situation and such because I haven't really followed it that closely, um, mainly because I don't have time to uh, to go in and read everything and so on. But I know what's been going on and yeah, I've been staying a little quiet uh, because first of all, as I say, I, I'm not really, I don't have the time and energy, mainly the energy to focus on, because you can decide to focus your time on whatever you want, right? So that's a bad excuse, but I haven't, I've been very focused on the family, on what's going on in my little bubble. Um, and, and again, I thought I was not the right person maybe to talk about this topic because I didn't know if my voice would add anything of value because I'm a white hetero, hetero, hetero how is that in English? Uh, oh God, I'm, um, I, I, straight, let's say straight, I'm a white straight, um, uh, person, woman, and I am small uh, in, si in size i am uh, i don't have any issues uh, health issues uh, so i don't fall in the categories that have been experiencing a lot of um, problems uh, in the both in the knitting community and outside so i i didn't know if what i would say would just yeah how, how i would talk about it but I, I keep reading things and it makes me really sad that this there is still this hate and this racism and this uh, looking at people in different ways. It's a really difficult issue to talk about and I've been thinking a lot about it. I've, I've been thinking about what, ha what happens if I don't say anything? What happens if I say something? What if I say something wrong? But what I was thinking about the other night and I couldn't sleep at all, I just kept thinking about this is... And I'm not gonna make this about me, so please, I hope that th this doesn't come across wrong, um, that I'm centering this about me, oh, I had a bad childhood and so on. But as a, as a kid, when I was getting into my teen years, I was bullied a lot, a lot. Uh, and for no apparent reason, I mean, I can come up with the reasons, but if you think about it, I was not bullied because I have a different skin tone or because I I was bullied because uh, where I grew up was it, you you shouldn't be any different and I, apparently I just was a bit different from the other kids um, but it was very hard when I got into my teen years and girls start focusing on their clothes and on boys and stuff and I just didn't fit in anymore and I it was very bad for a couple of years and as in uh, I, I won't go into details it was very bad and there were two groups when it came to the to the bullying there were the ones who were bullying actively and you know saying ugly things to me throwing bread at me because uh, they, they made fun of my name and they said I was my, my name is a bird's name and they thought it was funny to throw bread at me and during the breaks to yeah Kids can be really cruel, but uh, the the point is, there were the ones that were really actively bullying, and then there was the other group, which just didn't say anything and didn't do anything, and either they were watching or they kind of turned their back to what was going on. And the worst thing is, my friends were in that group. I mean, I had some friends. I was not totally uh, outside, but they never stood up for me. They never said anything. They never did anything, probably because they were afraid to be the next victims of the bullies. And if you think about it, that big group of people just watching made it possible for a few people, a few of the, the kids there to to keep me down, to to keep bullying me. And it didn't change because I mean, the adults were terrible. They were not even there. But those kids, 
they, if they had stood up and said this is not okay, it would never have happened, and or it would stop because then there would be too many of them, and maybe the other ones would start thinking. And what I was thinking is, even if I'm in I'm in that group right now, I'm in the group that's not saying anything, that's not doing anything because I. It's not me who is being bullied, uh, but. I don't want to be in that group and I hope maybe this example will make you realize what it does being in that group because that enables the hate to happen that nobody talks says anything that they just turn the blind eye or pretend it's not happening or it's not as bad as uh, the thing is for me that's difficult is it's if it happened in real life in front of my eyes if I saw racism or something I know myself and I know I would speak up and I would, I'm really not the kind of person who's afraid to speak my mind, but the way things are happening in so, on social media can be very, uh, it can be very hard to figure out how one should react because we, we read a lot of things, we see a lot of things on social media and it's always a choice, should I do something, should I not, it, I don't know if I'm, from a generation I didn't grow up with the social media so sometimes I find it hard to know exactly how I should react the only thing I know is I will I hope I never hurt anyone in the past I will try my best not to hurt anyone in the future uh, with anything I say or do and I hope I can help make the online knitting community more inclusive by showing and by saying I have a little audience here and I can say that it's so important that we speak up because if not we're just the big silent group of watching the bullying happening but not doing anything so I don't know if that was a, that example made any sense uh, I hope it didn't come across as me talking about myself uh, I can talk about bullying and my childhood another <laughs> time but um, it, it was just, it made me think about it. It made me realize what it does when we don't speak up and what happens if we don't say anything. Um, and I, there are plenty of better examples and people who speak about this much better than I, but I thought I would also say a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about it and uh, explain how I view things. Um, because in some way I just expect people to know that I am totally anti-racist. Uh, I'm for diversity but maybe you don't know that and actually when I posted about it on Instagram I realized I lost some followers like qu quite a few and I, I was surprised because I, I thought people knew who I was but of course you don't know who I am completely or you can put your own ideas on to what you have seen online and you can make up a person of that's how we all do we all have ideas about how other people are so it's important we say who we are and we show who we are and and as the last thing I just wanted to mention I got a message from a Danish knitter who asked me if I could uh, talk a little bit about the representation in the of diversity in the Danish knitting community and I was really thinking hard and I can't think of pretty much anyone any designer any knitter or like influencer in the Danish knitting community or dyer that are showing other people than that look like me typical Danish person but still uh, we are not all looking this way so it would be really cool if you know of anyone uh, let me know and I can give them a shout out so we just to make the Danish knitting community also a little more diverse that would be really great um, yeah, and I think that's all I'm gonna say about this topic. I hope I said it the best way possible. Uh, I think it's more important that I try to say what I think than I don't say anything because I'm afraid to say it wrong or to... Oh God, I keep thinking I should uh, sit down and write this long thoughtful text about something and it's just not gonna happen so I really think it's more important that I show my support of the uh, diversity of our community and I yeah I think this is all I wanted to say about um, 
this topic for now. I could probably talk about it for a lot longer, but I wanted to try to, yes, get keep get the message across. Uh, and I, yeah, I mean, let's continue talking in the comments, but please be respectful. Uh, I don't want any hate. I don't think it's necessary to be rude and hateful. Of course, there will be people who will dislike this video and I'll probably, who knows, but I just, uh, try to think about how you would talk to each other face to face and not behind the screen so um but about the knitting uh yes i'm wearing one of my finished objects today so i think i can start talking about this one this is a little crop top uh, it's a uh, my own design and actually i wanted to I was thinking if I should show it off now because again showing your designs before you release them um, it's maybe not always the best idea but this is a really simple design I just wanted to make a little fun crop top um, or t-shirt and I don't think I would release this uh, before next spring so you're gonna see see it well in advance and please be patient because it's gonna come out a little bit later I pretty much just knitted and put wrote down some notes, but I haven't written the pattern and I haven't had it tested or anything. There's still a lot of work to do. So, but it's a t-shirt uh, that I knit in Basic and which is the Danish yarn company, and it's in the Alino, um, the Alino. How do you say? The yarn is called Alino. <laughs> it is a mix between cotton and linen. I think it's a 50-50 or somewhere. 50-50 mix and this is in the nature white color I think it's called 05 if I don't remember if I remember correctly and it is um, very soft a little bit thicker cotton yarn let me go a little closer so you can see how it's it knits up um, and yes here it is it's like a little uh, cardigan tee and as you can see it's qu quite short uh, but it goes really well with high, high waisted stuff and it has a nice hem detail and some other things. I don't think I will give away all the details now because I gotta keep a little bit for later but it's a pretty simple design. It's really easy and uh, fast to knit because it's knit in the round. I'm not gonna say anything else except from of course the sleeves, uh, separation for sleeves. It's not knit in the round, it's not steaked. Um, yeah, and I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I like the little sleeves. I like the neckline. It could maybe be a bit more open, but I think it will stretch out. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. And I put on some big, nice coconut buttons, which I think really gives it a nice summery, summery vibe. I've seen this uh, style with the coconut buttons or the uh, tortoise shell imitation buttons um, a lot this summer and I really like it so I thought it would be cute and a t-shirt. Um, I will call for testers probably in the next couple of months. First I have to write down the pattern which I don't know when it's gonna happen but I will try to call for testers at some point and there will be a really long testing period. Normally I have been really bad in the past making the testing period quite short because I'm too impatient and I always think ah but this is fast I knitted in this and this amount of time but I realized that it is um, it I knit a size small or next to small and of course it's not going to take the same time to knit a size small as a size let's say uh, double x or two extra large um, I talk in sizes I know this is a bit, some people have an issue with that. Uh, it's just how I've, we do it in Denmark. And I know it's not the best way, but I just, I, I still have a hard time remembering, like, ah, how should I say? I know I should talk in the bust measurement. Um, and of course in my patterns, you will find bust, bust measurements, but I've just always been so used to the uh, small, medium, large system. Uh, so it just takes me a little while to get out of that. Um, but I understand that 
but it's a small it can be one thing if you go to one country another thing in another country depending on brands and so on so it's really not the best way of describing sizes so i would prefer to probably use another system but yeah as i'm saying i'm normally knitting uh, for my bus size which i can't remember right now also because i'm breastfeeding so it's going up and down and it's changing uh, so i really don't know my bus size precisely at the moment but um of course a smaller t-shirt is going to take less time to make and it's going to take less yarn and so on so i really want to try to give longer time longer periods for test knitting in the future um and i also wanted to mention because uh, it's been talked about quite a lot in the knitting community lately um about being more size inclusive and i will say it's not an excuse uh i would i would really want my patterns to have a wider range of sizes especially the bigger ones and i actually tried in the past with my retour to to make more sizes um but i just couldn't find testers for the big sizes i did calls for testers and retour was my first design i put out like proper sweater design and I didn't have many followers at that time and I was really new to the designing so I just didn't get any one interested in knitting that size so uh, I actually never managed to find testers for the largest size which I ended up including anyway but or I, I actually don't remember if I included it I have to check but yeah I had to think should I include this size should I not should I right that people could contact me if they there are many ways of doing it but um i i really want to add more sizes but it also has to they have to be tested they have to be the same quality as the smaller sizes uh, so coming back to this one i really want to uh, try to have this in as many sizes going as large as i can or to be more inclusive um, which means, and because it's difficult for me to find those sizes, once you get above uh, 2XL or, again, sorry, it's not in bus sizes, I just still in my head in this way, I, I have a hard time finding testers. So if you are bigger um, than the 2XL, or of course I will make a proper call for tester later, uh, testers later, um, <laughs> oh God, it's so hard to talk about this. Uh, because I'm trying to say things really thoughtfully, so I, I don't want to say things in a hurtful and bad way. Um, anyways, I'm looking for testers for the bigger sizes, so if you should be interested in, in testing for me in the bigger sizes, uh, I would actually really appreciate if you could just send me a message. It could be on Instagram or on fibertales at gmail.com. Um, so I can start gathering people for for testing some of my larger sizes. If you have ever looked at any my, any of my patterns um, that are already released and you think a size is missing or you could offer to test one of the larger sizes, please, 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 I would be so happy if you get in touch with me and I could uh, add those sizes to the, um, to the patterns. Uh, for example, my Nerea, which I have lying right here uh, which was released in line magazine issue 7 um, it I couldn't include the last I had actually made one size bigger but I couldn't include it because of time issues uh, and we couldn't find a tester for that size and time issues so I, I actually have the size already made and if anyone should be interested uh, I would love to hear from you I will um, do a proper call for testers, of course, but I'm just saying it here, so in case you're watching this and you have thought about it. Uh, but it's something I want to work towards in the future. The reason I'm not just updating all my patterns at the moment is, again, I'm on maternity leave. I'm not working as such. Um, uh, yeah, so the, I'm not going to uh, up, update the patterns now. Okay, I also finished a few other designs uh, I have here in my basket. One of them uh, is a shawl, which I'm not going to show. This is just the end of the shawl. Um, because this one I would like to keep a bit more secret. And I finished a sweater, which I have... Sh or a 
t-shirt sweater which I have shown on Instagram a couple of times in this beautiful linen quill by uh, Pearl Soho again I, I, I won't talk about it now which is a little bit boring I know so I have finished some things uh, I'm it's just a really slow process right now I'm just working and knitting mainly and and knitting up samples but in a very slow way uh, and that's just how it's gonna be for the next until the winter I think I will be and my maternity leave in December so from January there will be a lot of new exciting stuff happening um, so just in case you're wondering when why and how and all that good stuff uh, I've also been knitting on this design uh, I talked about it before it's like just something a cardigan that I'm working on with this very nice oh it's going everywhere texture I think it's really nice in the tweed uh, although it's not so easy to see there you go and yeah it's just a really slow project that I'm working on in between other things so right now I'm actually knitting on it because I finished that uh, t-shirt I just showed you and so I had I wanted to pick up just something before I start something else and uh, the last thing I'm working on is uh, in this beautiful yarn let me see if I can show that I got I was sent by Sweetsbury Yarns and it's a non superwash base and you know me I love non superwash yarns so I yeah she sent me this yarn for a design I came up with a long time ago and I just did the cuff um, it's a sock by the way <laughs> and yeah that's also something I hope to have ready for the winter to release when the winter comes so again just working slowly on some ideas I have and it's gonna be a lot of fun when I get to the point where I have to write down all the patterns at once because right now I'm doing the fun part that is knitting but I'm not writing down pretty much anything I'm right only taking notes on my phone so yeah that's it for knitting I think um, Again, I will talk more about the projects when they are released, when I get to them. Um, for now, I'm just showing you a little bit because if not, I have nothing else to show you. I don't, I, I pretty much always work on designs. Uh, I, yeah, it's, it's just, I can't help it. So I almost forgot to talk about what I've been sewing because <laughs> Uh, there's, I, I hope this episode won't be too chopped up. Um, yeah, I, if, uh, it's just not that easy for me to get my thoughts together today and that's just how it's gonna be. But I did sew a little something uh, and I have shared it on Instagram. I don't know if you can see anything, it's probably a little wrink wrinkly. Um, it is the Hinterland dress by So Liberated. I think she changed the name uh, to something wardrobe. Oh, I can't remember, but So Liberated. I, I don't know if she changed it completely, but on Instagram she's still So Liberated, I think. So, um, and this is a very popular pattern. Uh, I made it. Uh, I started making this when I was still pregnant, which is probably not bad. actually at the end of my pregnancy. So I, my bust was already bigger, and of course I had a huge tummy. And I didn't think to make it as a maternity dress, but I wanted to have it for breastfeeding. Um, yeah, so I didn't know exactly what size to make, uh, and thinking back, I don't know why I thought I would have much bigger boobs because of course they're bigger ones just after you give birth but then they go back kind of back to normal so now it's too big uh, but it's not so big that it's a huge problem the only thing for me is i think it's uh, the neckline is too open um would probably have preferred something a bit more like this so since i don't have a big bust when i lean forward it's not like you can just look straight into every yeah 
my <laughs> my down my belly um i made it with the three quarter length sleeves or they just go above the elbow and i made it short i also did the um, and the, the little ties to tie it in the back and the button plaque it down to here as i said i started making this uh when i was pregnant and and then i pretty much did the i decided on the size and i cut out the pieces uh, but i didn't really start sewing it until the little guy was my little boy was born and um it's actually been a really funny process for me and i really changed like it changed how i view sewing because sewing has normally been something that stresses me out a little bit um i just i always end up i ended up sewing for a whole day and then i would get hungry i would have to pee and i wouldn't go to pee because oh, i have to sew a little bit more and i know that sounds ridiculous but that's how i was sewing and I would just keep sewing, keep sewing, make more and more mistakes, get more and more tired, hungry, frustrated. And it just would never, it would never be a fun process. But when I did this one, I would, when you have the pattern, it kind of has like little uh, steps. And I would just do one step, like sew one seam, sew up the sleeve or make the, how you call this, the, um, the bias tape on the inside or... Uh, so a few buttonholes, even just one buttonhole at the time, and I would put the my little boy on the floor, and I made this uh, baby nest for him, and now he's everywhere, of course, so it's not so easy. But in the beginning, he and he would lie there and play with the toy until he would start complaining or just not be happy anymore, which uh, it's not always the longest. Uh, I I could do a little bit of sewing, and I actually really really enjoyed doing it uh, this way. Um, it took me, I don't know, four months, five months or something to finish the dress from when I started, but it just was a much more enjoyable process. It was much, more, it was much more like uh, knitting in the way that you can knit a little bit and put it down and put up. Of course, this is only possible because I have over here, I'm looking over here, that's my sewing machine. I have a desk set up with my sewing machine, which I always dreamt about when I was living in a small apartment. And now since we have much more space, I can actually have a dedicated space for sewing. And it just really changed everything for me in the way I, uh, yeah, I can just sit, sit down and sew one, st one seam and then I stop and I don't have to pack things back and uh, how you say I don't have to put everything out and take it back so it's been much more fun process um, I only did one modification I did this small bus okay that was strange I was uh, talking and then I noticed it started raining so I had to run out <laughs> and get some things outside and I came back and I wanted to keep recording but the video button was missing all of a sudden so uh i don't remember anything where i was or anything so it is gonna be one of those episodes where there's a lot of cutting happening and i'm sorry but i just really wanted to do the episode and mm. let me see uh, I was talking about I did the small bust adjustment. I just followed a video on YouTube. I don't remember which one, but you can go search for small bust adjustment. Uh, but I didn't think take into account that it made it shorter, I think. Yeah, it made it shorter. So that part was maybe I would change it. Um, so that's the only adjustment I made, but it fits. I think it fits well with the bust adjustment. The thing is, for me, the sleeves are too big, too loose. Uh, it is a little bit too deep in the neckline. I think that's because of the size, but I have to check if I did something wrong or I somehow forgot some put, like did something with the seam allowance. I don't know. There's something happening with that. Uh, also, so yeah, it's just, it just has a few issues, but I think I would use this one mainly at home, in the garden and so on. Um, it's really nice to wear, I really like it. The sleeves have a nice uh, hidden something, like hidden, hidden seam, it's not a hidden seam, how is it called? Yeah, they have, you can see the seam on the sleeve and 
otherwise the length perhaps I would lengthen it a bit uh, because it's a bit short and I prefer my skirts to be just a bit longer um, there's a longer option in the pattern but that for me is too long so I have to find out the perfect length but overall I'm really happy with how it turned out and I would make it again I just would change make a few modifications and so it's a good thing that I started this is not a super expensive fabric I got it at stuff stuff of steel um, it has these I really like these little wo wo woven um, like dots uh, all over it so I think that's really sweet um, yep so that's the hinterland dress so once in a while I get to sew and I think in the future I will try to approach sewing much more like uh, this project because it was a lot more fun a lot less stressful and I just overall enjoyed the process so much more um, I am thinking to make myself uh, I'm just wearing a skirt today but I'm thinking to make myself uh, uh, the, her new pattern which is the um, how is it called uh, I can't remember I will try to put it here in the description down below the um, her newest pattern which is a skirt with button a button placket and pockets and I think it looks beautiful I also really want to do the the pants how are they called I don't know why I'm so bad with the names anyways the pants she has a pair of pants which has a slim fit hack which I might be interested in too and um, so yeah there's a lot of there's some patterns I really want to make especially I really like so so liberated the patterns um, from so liberated so I'm thinking but right now I don't have much sewing time anymore uh, because I really have to be careful that the little guy is not eating things he's not supposed to eat he puts everything in his mouth and this, his sister is leaving a lot of toys everywhere so it's not that safe anymore and I don't have so much uninterrupted time to sew um, so I don't think I'm focusing on that right now uh, just really have to be smart about what I, how I spend my time. Uh, that is it for today's episode, which I can. I'm I'm sad I couldn't show more knitting, because I have all these really exciting things I'm working on. But at least that's why I just decided to show this one, even if it's a upcoming design. Uh, I I will think about uh, opening a Patreon. Uh, for when I'm done with my maternity leave uh, just because I think it would be really nice for me to talk about the patterns as I make them but I don't want to put that out on YouTube and I think it on Patreon could be a really good way I'm following a f I know a few other designers are doing that that they t use Patreon to talk about the designs and the process and show and tell a little bit more about things in depth so I think that would be an option maybe let me know if you could be interested in a patreon um, in the future so yeah a lot of exciting things I'm just taking taking time slow enjoying the moment enjoying being having this little wonderful human being to take care of and also take care of the big sister and try to have a happy family time right now while they're really small and it's summer although it doesn't always seem like summer because today is really overcast and not that nice uh, but there are days we can go to the beach and i really enjoy that um so yeah i hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about all these things and i will see you again hopefully soon i say that every time and it never really happens or at least lately it's not really happening but i hope you can be patient and wait for podcasts to happen take care bye